Ludwig Göransson, you scored one of the most exciting uh, film scores of the year for one of the most exciting films of the year, Black Panther. Um, you've also been, worked on a whole bunch of other projects that we'll talk about later, but let's get stuck into Black Panther first because everyone's so excited about that film. Um, perhaps maybe talk us through how you first got involved with the project. Well, I've been working with Ryan Coogler, the, the director, for about 10 years now. So I got, you know, as soon as, soon as he got that got the gig he uh reached out to me and and told me about it and you know um he was kind of immediately started writing the movie and i'm i'm I, one of the things that that makes our collaboration so special is that we get started so extremely early so you know he sent me a very early version of the script and i read it and you know my, my first what I first told him after I read it was like the only way I could score this movie is to to go to Africa and make research and and really immerse myself in the culture of of, of you know of what I've been what I've been reading about. So um, obviously you've worked with Ryan for a while now on, on quite a number of uh, projects. What would you say, apart from being involved early, what would you say is the best benefit of working with someone that you really know and trust? on a film like this where um, you're really going to have to kind of pull something really magical out of the hat? Uh, well, it's, you know, we have a very good similar kind of taste in, 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 in music and like the way of music tells, and the way the music's telling the story. And um, so like what I, what I, what I did when I, when I, when I, I did some research and, and I kind of figured out that I wanted to go to West Africa because that that was the part of where the drums and some of the instruments that I heard from there was just really intriguing to me and then and really spoke to me in, the, in terms of being cinematic. So I booked um, a, a trip to Senegal and I got to meet an incredible musician. His name is Baba Mal. And um, he kind of took me under his, his, his wings and and... and we went. Me and my wife went on tour with him for a week, traveling around different villages between Senegal and and, and um, yeah, northern Senegal, and um, and that's that's kind of how how the journey began. Like that's so exciting. Like what what would you say is like the most um, like surprising thing that you found from going to Senegal and kind of experiencing a whole different kind of aesthetic and musically? Was it did it did it open your eyes, or were you did you already have an expectation, or what was it like? Uh, well, I've been in, in in college. I went to Gambia for a month to study African music. It was a part of my 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 uh, education in in the College of Music in Stockholm. Um, I took a class, and we we spent a month in different tribes in Gambia studying African music. So it wasn't a, a totally like I kind of I knew a little bit what 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 music means over there, and and and, and how music is just a part of life in a different way than it is here. Like here in, in, in our tradition, like you, you play music to perform. There in, in Africa, you play music as part of life. It's, it's tradition, it's rituals, it's, you know, it's you, you play music to embody what, what you're going through in life. Um, so that was something that was, that I really wanted to, like, how can we get this into the music? How can we use rhythms, especially that was written for, a challenge between you know a younger man and an older man like uh, there's 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 specific rhythms written for these challenge moments thousands of years ago what if we use one of the one of those rhythms for a fight between mbaku and t'challa for example yeah it um reminded me a lot of um a lot of the indigenous type music like you find it in a lot of indigenous parts of the world um music is not just about performing as you say it's actually about storytelling and that's why um i think one of the reasons why this score is so effective is because it's so um it's so kind of embedded in the way that the film or what the film is trying to say and i was just wondering um on, in from that perspective can you identify any particular sounds or instruments that were like a light bulb moment for you when you were developing the musical aesthetic of this score well, something that I was always intrigued about, an instrument that always was interesting to me was the talking drum, um, which is a drum that you put um, under your your shoulder 
and you squeeze the drums so you squeeze the drum when you play it so it's actually kind of like it's almost like it's almost like it has a breath and it's almost so it's almost like a voice and you can form words on it. you can play different rhythms almost like morse code like a, like a, like you can you can send messages you can play rhythms and 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 speak and say words and in um i was i was a, i met one of the incredible target drum player his name is masamba diop and i was talking to him about the instrument and he he comes from a family of griots and uh, griots in africa means uh storyteller and that's also like the african term of musician if you're if you're a griot you're a musician and that's something that you're born into a, as a as from birth it's it's through blood through generation of generation you're born into a family of storytellers so he comes from from a family of, of talking drum players and so so when i was talking to him i was i was asking him like how would it sound if you played uh tachala if you would how would you say tachala on the talking drum and he played tachala do 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 and how does it sound if we have six talking drum players playing that room together? Uh, so we got his group together and we spent about a day just recording six talking drum players playing that rhythm and playing a bunch of other rhythms that, and that kind of, that sound was just so powerful and, and regal in a way. And it, 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 it became the sound of the cello. I'm glad you mentioned that because I was going to try to ask you about what that sound was without looking like an idiot, but um, it's so, it's so integral, it's so percussive and propulsive, it's unlike anything that I've really ever heard before in this genre, to be honest, and um, like for example, the, war the, the Waterfall Fight um, track features that quite heavily, and it's, it's hard to explain, but it's so addictive, like you just want to keep hearing it, because for some reason it just really kind of gets you in the mood for the film, and so that was really important to you in terms of get, making this score different. But were you actually very mindful of setting this score apart from the general, usual um, superhero genre type scores that we all kind of are quite familiar with? Yeah, absolutely. Like we wanted the sound of the movie to be the base of traditional African music and also African music pre the colonization era. So. You know, we wanted rhythms and sounds that didn't have any influence from from Europe, and and you know that 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 was always our intention to have those sounds and instruments be have, be the center of the story and be the center of the score. And the challenge, the big challenge, was how do I weave in like the cinematic sound of an orchestra? How do I use the orchestra in a way so it can support the African music in a way where it doesn't take overhand? And, and, and you know, it, that, that, was, that was probably, I would say the biggest, that was the biggest challenge because it's easy to go the other way around to have like an orchestra and then you have little, you know, a little djembe on it or just some African instruments on it. But I really wanted to have the core to be the African music and then support it with a traditional orchestra that could really make it extremely big and powerful and cinematic in, in, in some specific moments so like yeah and, and i loved the film a lot i'm sure you hear that all the time there's a very um it's a massive hit people really love the film and i particularly love the music not only the kendrick lamar curated soundtrack but your um score itself i listen in the car all the time and i turn it up really loud and people in, on the road look at me like what's wrong with that guy what's he playing and i'm just wondering if you're ever conscious of um Film score nerds like me listen to scores like what you've made, like they're just an album. Are, are you ever conscious of that, or is it all just about what's going to fit the film? And it never really occurs to you that people listen to it on their iPhones or in the car, like it's just an album, like any kind of instrumental album they want to listen to. Well, that's kind of a second thought, you know. And the the purpose of the music is always to, to serve the story and to serve the film. So that that's the main goal. And then, like later on. You know, when I'm done with the film, like I'm putting together the, the score for the actually album version. So I kind of emerge, like I put some cues together. And, but I think in general, like I said in the beginning, like the way that me and Ryan agree on and, and why we bond so well together on, on, on storytelling and music, especially music's place in storytelling is, is I think if you listen to the 
to the to the music in your car or in your headphones like from 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 track one to the last track like you you kind of have a sense of exactly what's going on in the movie and yeah you definitely do uh, um so like obviously a lot of the tracks and cues that you that you created for the film um, punctuate certain scenes and they all kind of they're there for a purpose and i've got lots of favorites myself but i wonder um given that it's like you've given birth to this thing do you have a favorite track generally when you're making these things and particularly for black panther is there something that that you keep going back to and that you think that you're very very proud of in particular uh, i think there's there's definitely like some specific moments that i like oh this is i remember like oh this was really difficult to and took a lot of time to figure out how to do uh and i kind of i think after after the movie came out and after the soundtrack and score came out like i, I had to take a little break from listening on it and kind of distance myself to it but but i kind of listened to it again a couple of weeks ago and i i mean i think i i i i don't know if there there's there's a lot of stuff that i think is, is pretty cool and then and, and a lot of production and ideas and a lot of ways that, that the orchestra kind of worked into the African music that I was I was I was really proud of and happy with how it turned out and what, how do you react to um, the feedback that you're getting for this one in particular it's such a massive success and the, and the music is so important to the film as we've discussed um, do you have you been reading the reviews or have you been enjoying the positive feedback you're getting or what's generally this what what are you getting from the public and from colleagues about this school? Well, I think some, something that's fun that I, did, that I actually didn't really think about when I was creating the score is that, you know, people were like, well, how it's, you know, people are talking about how it's, there's so many styles of music. There's, you know, African music, there's hip hop, there's uh, classical, there's just so many different kind of genre, genres and different instruments, and but it still feels very connected. And that was something that, like, I didn't think about that when I was creating it. I was just thinking about, like, how I was just like, well, this is what it is. This is the music. And I didn't think about that. It was like a lot of different, I guess, styles or genres. But but I'm I'm happy that people feel like it's a consistent piece and a consistent, you know, piece of work. Yeah, and I would I would say the same thing would go for some of your other scores that you've done recently, particularly for me for Creed. Like, I remember looking back to 2015, my favorite track of the year of any genre of music was Conlon Fight, and I listened to it constantly, probably too much. And um, and I just was thinking, well, now that I've got the opportunity to speak to you about Black Panther, I really need to ask you what if you have a particular highlight from your work on the Creed films, or just in terms of um, how you think that turned out and what it meant to you at the time uh well i'm really happy with i mean the the like the the training montage for example for both creed one and creed two are such a massive piece of music and it's also for a composer it's like any composer's kind of dream because it's like five to six minutes of music concept music played in the forefront you know and it's almost like a music video kind of and so i was very you know I, I, i'd say like that's that's the piece and the the composition that kind of you put the most time into and it's also the most time consuming piece of music to write because the montage changed constantly like they're cutting it they're changing the storyline it's like so i remember i was very proud and very happy with how it turned out in creed one and then in Creed 2, it was, I think we had in the Tem, when they were cutting, they had, they used the music from Creed 1. And I was like, oh my God, like, because it's very hard to kind of try to beat yourself. Like, yeah. hear your own music and like, okay, what, what, like, how I'm going to make this better? Because I remember like, oh, for the first montage music I put in, like, I mean, hundreds and hundreds of hours like late nights and like and for this one I was like okay I'm gonna have to go through that again and it's like <laughs> and uh and I did and um it really feels good to be on the other side when you're done with it and you can just see it and enjoy it in, in its full content with the picture and I was very I was very happy with 
you know how I could how how I kind of started it out very classical with just strings and and kind of like Bach inspired and then came in with a modern production and used like one of Creed's themes then came in with the Drago theme that was that was a really fun part to write the Drago theme but that's like the first time in the montage that's the first time in the movie where you hear it like really like aggressive like in in the brass like you know like okay this is shit is going down <laughs> uh, and then all oh, the dynamic we were able to create within the montage with with him kind of having a hard time and and and, and falling down and we had the voice of the singer J Jacob Banks coming in to like grab you emotionally and then he rises up again and the orchestra comes in with his theme and then you have Aesop Rocky like on the climax of the score like Aesop Rocky wrote an original verse for that specific moment um there was just so many pieces that just came together in the uh, very last minute yeah, it's a, it's a really exciting score, I must say. Anyone who hasn't heard it, you should go and listen to it. Um, so you are not only a composer, obviously you're a musician, you've got a really interesting kind of resume uh, on TV and working with um, Donald Glover and a whole bunch of other people. But just focusing on your um, film compositions, um, do you have one particular score that you that's your favourite or a particular influence that you keep thinking back to in terms of I love that composer or I love that score and and it's kind of not an influence but something that you look back and think yeah that was an amazing piece of work uh there's always I mean there's always some some composers and artists that I kind of go back to and listen to uh to get inspiration like like a, like there's a Swedish metal band that I love called Meshuga um that are always inventing new ideas with rhythm um and that trying to like listen to that music and have and, and and coming up with new ideas to use rhythm in my music is very that that always keeps me inspired um there's a jazz guitar player kurt rosenwinkel that was kind of he's kind of my my go-to like jazz guitar player and, and one of my favorite musicians and composers um that i always kind of circle back to um and then lately i've been really into uh puccini I've been kind of rediscovering or discovering opera and 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 just just going to the opera and, and seeing how they use how listening studying the music and and really researching how the cinematic effect of, of opera has been extremely inspiring and important for me lately so looking forward we hope to see you at the Golden Globes and the Oscars. I, I have a suspicion that you'll probably be there. Fingers crossed for that, obviously. But and I know it doesn't mean it's not what everything is all about. Obviously, it's the work itself that speaks for itself. But you were recently nominated with Childish Gambino at the Grammys, so you kind of have some experience in terms of being nominated for a big um, award. What what does awards and good reviews and accolades mean to you as as a composer? Um. Well, I. Had, yeah. Yeah, I mean, having I yeah, we I don't we won a couple of I think Donald won for like best traditional R and D performance, um, but um, I think it's just it's just it's it's nice to get like appreciated from a larger audience and larger part of the community of for your work, and you know I'm I don't know how it feels to win yet, but <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. Fingers crossed. Yeah, maybe we're going to hear Black Panther play it on the um on the Oscar stage. Perhaps we'll see what happens. Um. Anyway, thanks, Ludwig, for your time and good luck this award season. And thanks so much for um a really great uh, sc uh score for both Creed two and Black Panther this year. Well, thank you. It was really nice to talking to you. <laughs>